Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is another video from our transfer talk, and we're discussing Burnley because our Burnley fans let us down. Yeah, pretty but much. Anyway, we'll get your guys on again. Don't you worry. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So I suppose we'll kick things off. Well, we did bring the jersey for them. So. Yeah, um, the jersey there. So. Represent. You know, it is what it is. Do you want to point to it there, Josh? I'll probably wore it to bed one night or something. Nah, so I wouldn't do that. Am I? Um, and Ross Barkley jersey to that Jesus, you living in hell or something? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Morgan Schneider. <laughs> um so I suppose we kicked it off of who, who kinda of who they signed. I mean well, well we have um their other jersey here, but they're away jersey. Yeah. Next they're away jersey. <laughs> it might be their home jersey by the end of the transfer window, let's be fair. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously they just signed uh, Johnson Walters, which is a great sign, I think, for him and for them. Yeah, uh, they seem like they're lacking a player and it seems as though if he does go there he'll play down the middle. Yeah, um, I think that's good for Walters at this stage of his career. Um, in More the of a utility, it's so. In, yeah, in the Premier League, like he's, he doesn't have the legs to be a right winger with full backs bombing forward all the time. Like he's obviously he works hard, but I don't think he can be as effective yeah. out on the right wing as he probably was five years ago. Um, so I think I mean, that, he wasn't <laughs> consistently great on the right hand wing. No, like he was a pretty much a plodding championship footballer for a lot of his career playing on the right wing. And it was only when he moved through the middle that you kind of started to get noticed a little bit. But listen, the way that Burnley play and the way that Sean Dyche wants to play football, John Walters is absolutely perfect for that. Because when they do want to play the ball into the channels behind fullbacks and stuff like that or try and play it long, we all know from watching with Ireland, John Walters is just a unit. Yeah. If he gets on the ball, you're not knocking him off. You're going to have to foul him or you're going to have That's to... the Germans. Yeah. Ask the Germans. Single-handedly, they took Ask the out. Bosnians. <laughs> yeah. Ask the Austrians. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about uh, uh, Walters at this point of his career? Do you think it's a good move? Yeah, great move. Um, exceptional transfer for Burnley. I've always rated John, Johnny Walters. Not. He loves a goal against you lot. because <laughs> <laughs> he's a big glue now, as we oh, all know that. He loves a turn out against us. Um, but now he's... Still a goal. <laughs> Go I'm not going to say he's a great all-round footballer, but... The work he puts in with the team and his ability to finish second to none, and I think if Burnley are gonna stay up or do whatever they're gonna they want they want to do right now, I think he's gonna be pretty much central to that. He's not gonna get bullied up up front playing for Burnley. He can play there on his own, bring players like Brady into Brady into the game. I just think oh, it's an all around fantastic meal for Burnley. Yeah, and for Ireland. Yeah, yeah I definitely. think he'd get a lot more game time down the middle, and that will suit him more if he's gonna be playing for Ireland down the middle. Then you know, definitely. or even if he's playing in the two. He like, could potentially play. Too, there was a little link as well there last week where uh, Burnley were linked with Peter Crouch from Stoke as well. And that would have actually, I think, suited Walters even better because him and Crouch, and they played up from last season for Stoke, were actually really good together and kind of helped Stoke have a little bit of a revival. I think he actually, for a lad who's so physical and stuff, I think he kind of feeds off playing off a big man a little bit. I uh, think he enjoys it, the knockdowns and stuff like that, and then bringing other players into play what, by him being physical as well on the ball. Yeah. Where the ball comes down, if a central defender is coming to crack him, it's very difficult to crack John Walters off the ball, and he's going to turn and get a pass away to, as you say, Brady and stuff like that, and the more creative players. Um, but obviously Peter Crouch won't be because he's now presenting a rock show on Radio X instead of playing football. So <laughs> that got announced today. I just wanted to pop that in there at some point. Peter Crouch is now a radio presenter. Uh, <laughs> he's just retired from football I don't know I don't know I just know he's presenting a radio show every day I think he's Stan Crowley more isn't it? yeah um, <laughs> but yeah Walters for Burnley with probably Sam Vokes next season is kind of their well, yeah, you've got Andre Gray there as well I suppose and he looks like he's going to grow yeah Gray looks like he might be on his way to Spurs so that's kind of it's not the only club I hear he's linked to it. listen you actually won't be able to register all of these players it's only have 25, 25 <laughs> lads it's not what they didn't even say anything they just know <laughs> they just know listen if a player is linked with a club they're probably going to be linked with Everton as well so let's be fair but I'm I think, just enjoying it because yeah. this is the first time it's ever happened <laughs> um, let me enjoy my moment <laughs> okay. fuck's sake but yeah now Gray looks like he he might be on his way to Spurs kind of back up Kane and when yeah. you're backing up Harry Kane Kane will get injured at some point during the season yeah well. Janssen there dog I think yeah. he might have a better season than last year I don't know Janssen for me is another one of he's another Alfonso Alves where he'll score goals in the Dutch league but he won't do a lot anywhere else and I don't think he's got the pace for the Premier League or the physicality um, mm. but in a Burnley sense if Gray was to go 
Walters is a downgrade on Andre Gray in a lot of ways, but in an experience and, for me, a big game mentality, he's probably an upgrade. Um, Gray seemed to score a lot of goals against the smaller teams last year when he did get his goals. So I think Walters is probably an upgrade on Gray yeah. um, in that sense. I suppose um well let's stick on to the transfers that they brought in anyway. The other one was obviously Charlie Taylor from Leeds. Yeah, uh, left back. Um handsome man. He is. He is he's a handsome he man. He's got a great barn. He looks quite like you. Must be fair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh no, he's got a nice barn though. Um yeah. left back. Um uh, what does this mean for Stephen Ward? Um They've probably just signed the best left back in the championship from last season. Maybe Chris Lowe from Huddersfield is kind of there with him, but they're definitely they were definitely the best two left fools in the championship last year. Taylor is a Taylor's a good crosser at the ball. He's good with the ball at his feet and going forward. He's a good defender. Um, they've got him. I think the tribunal is probably going to end up with five million for him with this stupid thing where a player under twenty three has to go for a transfer fee even if they're on a free transfer. Um, if the club happens to appeal it, which Leeds have, um, blind. but ta- like I think Taylor is going to come in, and that will probably single signal the end of Stephen Ward as a starter at Burnley. I think if Burnley are going to stay up and Burnley are going to progress as a club, I think you need to be bringing in players like Charlie Taylor to replace guys like Stephen Ward who've done a really good job for them. But to take that next step, you need someone younger, a bit more about them going forward, a bit more pace. It was Burnley the one thing that they really, for me, lacked a lot of last season was pace. They didn't have, apart from Andre Gray, a lot of it in the team. And someone That's like true. Taylor is going to... Kind of <laughs> they literally don't, do not have any pace. <laughs> Never <laughs> seen any more pace for them. This is he just thinks you know, that old man. <laughs> well, Robbie Brady, I suppose. I think Dean Marnie's still on the books there. Wasn't yeah. he playing for Spurs in the 90s? <laughs> Something like that. He's, he's got a goal that's ever still there. Yeah, he's <laughs> what? He's actually still there. I'm pretty sure Dean Marnie played for them a lot of the first half of the season. They yeah, got injured, he did. didn't he? Tommy Heaton's probably faster than... Um, well, they have Robbie Brady's pacey, but he doesn't play that often. Do you? Yeah, Bra- I, think, I think Brady will come into the team a little bit more, but like they definitely do need an injection of pace because you mm. take away Andre Gray and... I don't know, Scott Arfield's probably their second quickest player. And I'm not even sure if Scott Arfield's quick or not because, <laughs> to me, he's just kind of a mirage on a football pitch. He really doesn't do much any time you see yeah. him. You get such pelters off Burnley fans for that. I suppose last-minute winners against Everton, though. Very interesting. Um, okay, and then, obviously, they got Jack Cork, um, defensive midfielder from... Um, he'll do Swansea, Chelsea. I mean, he's, he's moved from Southampton to Swansea. To, he's just, a, he's Chelsea, just a, Chelsea, Scum, Swansea, Burnley. He's just Still an average down. midfielder, in my he'll opinion. He'll do a job, like, do you know what I mean? It's it's another kind of Burnley signing, really, isn't it? But we're going to get into another player who could possibly end up at Burnley, or two, actually, who could possibly end up at Burnley for the end of the transfer window. Two, two more central midfielders. Defensive. Yeah. yeah, to go along with Stephen DeFore, Jeff Hendrick... Um, what is our Hendrik Cork and Dean Marnie? Like we think, good Mon- <laughs> good Munson can play in central midfield. Like they are just, so they're big. trying Over to run just of average. They're midfield. just trying to put in a load of pludgy central midfielders <laughs> who'll make it a rough game, and I think that's what they're trying to do. But at the same time. If you're going to do that and you're going to play four four two and you're not going to have Stephen DeFore in your team when you're Burnley, you're really missing a trick there because you just have no football. Creativity. You, yeah, you've no creativeness from defensive midfield um, without DeFore on that team, which then means that you've got four or five guys battling for one spot. And are they all going to be happy coming in to kind of... I know DeFore gets injured quite a bit, but are they going to be happy kind of coming in for really mm. one spot? Do you think uh, Hendrick could fill that kind of creative role? I don't think Hendrick's a creative player. I think Hendrick's a very Still good box to box to box player. Picks up the ball go very well off kind of you know broken play and stuff like that. But he's not a player who's going to ping sixty yard passes and open up defenses like that. He's more of an he's more of an athlete in midfield. He's more of a runner with the ball than he is a passer. Mm. So which is good. Like he's, Hendrick's a good player, but he's not going to be that driving creative force that. 
Burnley probably need if they are going to, because the teams who've come up from the championship are better than the teams who came up last year with yeah. them. And I think, and obviously you had the mess that was Sunderland there as well, which kind of kept teams like that really above water because you were pretty much guaranteed six points most of the season. Um, God bless Sunderland, obviously. <laughs> Um, are they obviously, you know, uh, do you think Cork is a good signer for them? Again, as I said, like I know he's, he is a saying, like oh, I just think he's bang average. Yeah, and it's, nothing more to him. I I think he's a decent passer of the ball. He's probably a better passer of the ball than Hendrick or Barton that way last year. Um, but again, he's just another defensive-minded central midfielder. He's not gonna drift into the ten roll. Or, you know, go on marauding runs or play clinical last bit passing. It just seems more and more like Burnley are trying to get, right, let's win the ball back in defensive midfield, let's spread it to our fullbacks, and then let's play it as long as we possibly can to Sam Vokes and hope to God that Walters or Hendrick picks up the knockdown, plays it to Brady, and Brady does something. Like, that's the way I'm looking at Burnley, for me, are a team who, when it came up before, a couple of years ago, they had the same problem. They didn't have enough creativity in their side. They are solid defensively. They're solid in defensive midfield. They've got a, they, Their strikers are okay. They'll probably, both of them, who star for them any given season, regardless of who they are, will probably hit 10 goals if they play enough, each of them. But they miss that next part to really push them forward in games. And... If they don't address that, it's going to be a really long second season for Burnley because they look like they look like prime candidates for a second season syndrome. Um, yeah, so suppose we're we're gonna wrap it up there. Um, as far as Burnley, any of their ideal replacements? Um, how, how who do you think? Let you go first. Your ideal signing for Burnley, or something. <laughs> <laughs> James Burnley. <laughs> <laughs> no, in a, in a realistic sense. In another, they probably do need another centre half. Okay, yeah. Who if realistically who could they sign? Is there an awful lot out there? Phil Jaggy, okay. Do you want to let him go? It is. No, I don't. Will, I, just, I just think he'd be a good back? signer for them, John. Do you know? What I think a smart thing for him would to be to save the money and go out and sign someone, someone on loan from one of the bigger clubs. Zuma. So, He's going to Stoke. Zuma's well. on his way to Stoke. Zuma seems to be done with or done to Stoke, which would actually lead me to believe that one of Muniesa or Shawcross is probably on the market. I think either of them would be a good signing for Burnley. I think Muniesa would actually bring a bit more kind of ability to the team. He's yeah, he's very, yeah, he's very good with the ball at his feet. Yeah, but they for, don't like to play. Football. <laughs> yeah, but like they have to. They have to. Pass, they they have, have to like have a defender who can play the ball forward nicely because the defensive midfield is just spin backwards and just play it. <laughs> But, defensive midfielders are getting in the way. Um, if I was signing someone, um, someone just for League of Ireland fans, like Pat Craig would be a great son. Burnley absolutely missed their three sixty. Picks up the ball, yeah, looking that. at the opposition goal, and finishes looking at his own goal, playing it back to his fucking goal. You know who I think would be a great um, son? Claudio Reina as well. Once in Manchester City, he's going to be <laughs> a <laughs> crack yeah. on it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know he's Jack- director of football at New York City FC now. But get him out, <laughs> get him and Vieira out of retirement. Stick the two of them in midfield. Would you not put uh, Jack Rodwell in there just to pass the ball backwards or sideways? Yeah, but Burnley want to win. Football matches, yeah, but uh, he's a defensive midfield. Yeah, I know, but he's won one Premier League game since <laughs> twenty twelve or something mad like that. So he's he's, yeah, he's basically not won a Premier League game since he left Everton. So he's across the half. I don't. <laughs> yeah. um, um, I think at a realistic note, and we were joking about them not having any pace or whatever. But I think someone even like a Bakary Sacco from um, Palace, because obviously Burnley don't have a lot of money. Um, someone like a Bakary Sacco, even a Lewis Baker from Chelsea on loan, um, who we talked about in the Chelsea video. Um, Which you can check out on our yeah, channel. Check it's out on the channel. Um, yeah, even with Baker, someone like that who we joke about defensive midfielders as well. He's not, he's more of a number 10. And I think oh, he'll actually, be moulded, don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> be moulded into a deep flying playmaker. <laughs> Um, but no, I think someone like that will bring an extra dimension to what Burnley tried to do. Um, I think he kind of, if you wanted to switch formation to a four-two-three-one, I think he'd be perfect to play in that ten roll. But yeah. I don't think Sean Dyche has watched the football match post nineteen ninety-eight, so we're kind of struggling there. <laughs> Actually, John, we were saying he's poor man, David Moyes. He's poor man's pewless. <laughs> I think, you know, I think that I, I did sign someone who they could realistically get. Uh, 
in the league. <sighs> Gareth Barry. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Gareth yeah, Barry is an absolute show. Uh, no, but I was very thinking, yellow cards. I was thinking more of a. a <laughs> Charlie Adam, no. I was thinking more of. A, <laughs> I was thinking more of an attacking midfielder. Um, do you know who they'd be a great signing for them? I don't think he'd ever go. Is uh, Nasser Chadley? Yeah, I think he'd be a great signing for for Burnley. Yeah, someone like him, even as you know, as cliche and stupid as it'll sound, coming from an Irish sense, James McLean. He's not going to start games for West Brom. Imagine putting him in that left hand side. Yeah, and just I mean, keep, and just hoofing balls long behind the right back, having Walters chase and having McLean <laughs> follow it up. Mm. That's terrifying for any right back in the league. Kyle Walker won't like that. <laughs> Yeah, well, Kyle Walker have to Kyle turn Walker. backwards, which he doesn't like to begin with. So, have to go Kyle back and do Kyle Walker is a hard time, but anyway, um, if you think we've missed out on any defensive midfielders that you'd like to sign for, <laughs> I'm only joking. If you think yeah. of, uh, we've left out anybody, um, anyone that you think that realistically Bernie can sign, because there hasn't been much that they've been linked with, um, do leave a comment below, or if you if you're more in the know than us about Bernie. Um, and and just, you do know that they're about to sign someone, do let us know. I mean, just for the record as well, for all our joking and stuff, I do actually think Bernie will just about stay up this season. Yeah, I, I, obviously we want them to step through their Ireland, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I do I do actually think they will stay up this season. So for all the joking we've just done about defensive midfielders and stuff, a lot of being... Bernie fans will we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll laugh about listen, it too. Listen, a lot of being down that part of the league you need to be good defensively and you need to not concede a lot of goals and you've got Bernie have a brilliant goalkeeper in Tom Heat and mm. their back and four the bus. yeah their back four is solid enough and they do have plenty of defensive midfielders to kind of <laughs> back the bus. I was trying to make an actual serious point but yeah they do have plenty of defensive midfielders to kind of sit deep against the bigger teams and make it really difficult for them so I think they'll probably pick up just about enough points to stay up this year but then the real fun starts because then we to talk about them again next year and kind of try and find a deep line playmaker that can you know pass the ball forward. Gary Barry's going to sign for in January. Uh, Gareth, Gareth Barry, I think, is an absolute show. Gareth Barry and Darren Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Breaks back memories, Paul. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Not good ones. <laughs> back, back when, back when Everton were Bernie, it wasn't that ah, long. That would be a great sign if we to bring a real extra dimension to their game, actually. And I'll just make this a serious point, serious. But Quinton Fortune. Quinton Fortune. Like a right back. No. no. no Qu- the middle of the pack Quinton Fortune was a like utility man. <laughs> no, Eric Jemba Jemba. He's, no, he's still up in. Cleverson. Kieran oh, Richardson. Cleverson was. <laughs> listen, Cleverson was part of that World Cup team in 2002. Like. <laughs> let's, let's, let's put this to bed before the Burnley fans hate us forever. Yeah. Sorry, Burnley fans, but you should have came on to defend your team. It's alright. Pompey will take six points off Blackburn this year and make us feel better about it. Thanks very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Don't forget to comment, like, and don't forget to click the subscribe button. I don't know how many times we've told you and you just never do it. So we're up to 225 subscribers now. So um, keep that number rising. Thanks very we much. We 300 by August. Make it happen. <laughs> yeah, so obviously, um, defensive midfield seems to be the biggest uh, issue with John Deutsch. He loves it. So obviously they're linked with uh, Glenn Whelan. Your mate, um, <laughs> and they're linked with uh, Escalante off Ibar, 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 sorry, Ibar. Um, a defensive midfielder, kind of in the mold of Claudio Jakob of uh, West Brom. He's just a little knacker. <laughs> <laughs> He's just. A, I hate Jakob. He's a little knacker. I I, a, I tend to forget Claudio Jakob's a footballer a lot of the time. I watched him play <laughs> against uh, Everton, and uh, I seen him. He kept trying to break up Tom Davis, and Tom Davis was. More of a I feel the same about Yana Salton, especially when Luis Suarez is playing against him. Um, I'll start with Escalante and then I'll let you go on to your best friend, Glenn. Right. Um, <laughs> um, with Escalante, he's a player here, as you say, with Yakub. Escalante, okay, I got you on this one. Escalante, yeah. You didn't say that. That's what I did. You said Escalante. Anyway, you usually es- correct me for es- Escalante. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's kind of, as you say, with Jakob, he's a decent passer of the ball. He likes to play deep and stuff like that. Um, but, as you pointed out to me, 10 yellow cards, one red card last season for an A-bar team who... They, they don't play the greatest of football either for a Spanish team. He'd probably be an upgrade on Barton and stuff, but he's he's not going to come in and be... I see, he's only going to be 6 million. 
he's, yeah, he's not he's not gonna be a game changer of a footballer though. He's just gonna come in and be another one in the rotation. Of... He could be another Angolo Kante. No, gonna win the league. I guarantee you now he's not another Angolo <laughs> Kante. I I will put my house. I will eat a hat. I don't care. He is what was not... the other thing about the hat though? <laughs> oh jeez, I can't remember. We're gonna have to go back. <laughs> Could someone go back through our videos, find the other thing I said I was gonna need a hat for? I think uh, it was the Brighton video. Was it the Brighton video? It was it if they stay up? I think that was what I was saying. Anyway, I think it might be if they stay up, so that's a dodgy one. Obviously, the Brighton fans who were coming today didn't like that, did they? Whoops. Anyway. Didn't like anything we said, did you? Well, no trophies, is there? No trophies as usual. So what we know are plastic fans. But anyway, <coughs> <right>. Bottles. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Josh, Glenn Whelan. <laughs> Yeah, because that's glad he's just a knacker <laughs> and there's nothing more around. And that's it. Smacker <laughs> on the Glen Wheel. Anthony Stokes is next. <laughs> <laughs> now, in fairness to him, I did absolutely hate him under Jim and Tony. He's grown on me a little bit. But in you saying see, that. I just want to give him a hug. Out, 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 he's, not, he's not going to influence many Burnley games next year in an attacking sense but I'm not sure if any of their players are I don't think Sean <laughs> Dyche the more I talk I went into this Bur- 10 men uh, <laughs> I went into this Burnley video really optimistic about it going, but they're not a bad side they've got some good players and stuff and the more I talk about it and the more we look at all the players are linked with it's like what? Sean Dyche has a thing for defensive midfield there's like he's yeah, there's a big thing <laughs> <We're looking laughs> past the a big Big long thing, <laughs> right to left, and that's about it. Go on. He's, he's gonna. <laughs> Glenn Whale is gonna sit in front. <laughs> go on, go on, what? It's gonna. Go on. We're keeping this. I don't care. So on. yeah. Um... Okay. Who, else, who else are they Breed. linked with, Paul? What's that? Who else are they linked with? <laughs> um, Carl Jenkinson. <laughs> oh, great. He's not a defensive midfielder, so... <laughs> He's a defensive right-back who can't play football, so... <laughs> Seems right into the Burnley man. <laughs> Once he sits behind the ball, I'm sure Sean Dyche should be happy. Sean Dyche... <laughs> Sean, Dy- <laughs> Sean Dyche is essentially that manager he had at under 12s, and he... <laughs> <laughs> the one who told the full-backs they weren't allowed past the halfway line. He's essentially that man. He's essentially a pro man's David Moyes. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. I, although he looks a little bit more optimistic than David Moyes. I was close to giving David Moyes the Samaritans number a couple of times last year. Like, so he's a little bit more upbeat Not than that. Necessarily. Yeah, I think... I, I, Moyes I saw more um, attacking midfielders. <laughs> yeah, but they, they were like Stephen Pienaar and stuff like that. So that's not really attacking midfielders. That's signing the all-day pensioners. He should be back in the South African League. And that man, Yanis, Hey, don't knock the Yanisoy. yanisoy has gone to Sociedad now to fill the Carlos Vela-shaped hole that they have there. And then but next season he's going to go on loan to Portsmouth. No, 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 Preston. He'll sign for Everton and then immediately go on loan to Preston for the season and just complete the David Moy cycle. He won't go to Everton. Ronald Keane is too sensible. He um, won't go on to Everton and just send him on loan to Preston. You have to complete the Moy cycle at some point. You're just following him around. Just for the crack. Yeah. Um, okay. Anyway, <laughs> but, yeah, James. They can actually deal with Yanazai. Let's be fair. Yeah. He's a bit of he's a bit <laughs> he's of attack and flair. Like. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but, didn't even look. Well, Yankins, uh, Jenkins. I'm calling him Yankins. Like he's a foreigner or something. Well, he's Finnish. So it, what? Finnish yeah. one is he? He's a Finnish under twenty one international. <laughs> and then in England under twenty one international. It's bizarre for me, <laughs> but anyway. Um, yeah, well, anyway, uh, yeah, they don't really have much coming in the door there. I mean, anything that does is probably protecting the door there. Anyway, um, <laughs> sitting deep, in front of the door. <laughs> spraying past <laughs> ten <Yes>. yards. <laughs> anyway, oh, we're talking about the biggest any, loss. <laughs> any Burnley fans who are watching this, I never coming on to this show now. Listen, please come on and defend Burnley, like, because I actually like them as a club. They've got, and they've I love the centre of the defence in <laughs> Anyway, yeah, we're, we're going to the, <laughs> the biggest loss of the um, probably the transfer market. And it was Joey Barton. Michael King. No, Joey Barton. Sits in front of that back four, lovely. Yeah, well, uh, he, he leading by example. Yeah, yeah leading by example. <laughs> and you're out, Kim and I are. <laughs> yeah. Well, as far as... Uh, Burnley no, 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 to win. In and all seriousness, yeah. um, Michael King was a big loss for them. He was a yeah. rock for them last, last season. Um 
we all know that every every person in front of the league last year would know that um they haven't like i know they're signing all these defensive midfielders but they haven't signed a center back to replace well, i think i i honestly think kevin long is probably just going to slot in there but yeah kevin long mm-hmm. has been fairly solid yeah, uh, but they've if he gets long, injured, they've Kevin Long, they've Ben Me, and then they've James Tarkovsky as well, who they signed for Brentford last season. He's actually not a bad player too. Mm. He kind of played a little well, bit for them last it, season. They, I don't think centre half is. They're gonna good. have enough protection either way. <laughs> exactly, I think we could probably play centre half, and we have loads of protection, <laughs> and they sit deep anyway. So yeah, not that's about five of them. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, the team next season is gonna be Heat and Loughton, Long, Me. Taylor, and then just six defensive midfield. And Jenkinson, and then <laughs> John Walters. Jenkinson is Jenkinson and Ward as defensive wingers. Yeah, um, obviously they got rid of George Boyd, who's been been a big player from the last couple of years. He's gone to Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, I think it's the right time for him to kind of move on. There wasn't much going on from. He was there a long time. Um, I think Walters, in his work rate, is gonna kind of do similar things for Burnley, but. I think in ter- I think I George, George Boyd probably has a little bit jo- more about him technically. Ah, oh, George Boyd just used to come out and run half marathons for Burnley every week. Like he would just be up and dead, he just all over the place for them. Is that the problem was it? I think that might have actually <laughs> been the problem. I think he might have been running marathons before the games. But like George Boyd, uh, George Boyd when he was at um, he ran forward when he was like, at Peter, he when he was at Peter and when he was a Hull, he was actually quite a good technical player. Scored a lot of goals. Actually played up front for Peter Brown a lot. Scored a few goals for Burnley to be fair. Yeah, like he's not a bad player, and I think he is a loss because at the end of the day, he does have a little bit of pace about him, and that's an issue. In <laughs> <laughs> that team, isn't he? They're just going to try to sign Usain Bolt now out of spite to us, aren't they? Probably. He's a bit of pace, getting behind. Um, um, but yeah, no, I think he's a very good signer for Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. Um, and he's someone who I think will push to kind of get them up to the Premier League. He's player, he knows how to do it. Yeah. He's done it with Hull, he's done it with Burnley. He. He gets it. He's a good player for that top end of the championship, bottom end of the Premier League, and he is a loss to Burnley. But at the same time, he wasn't playing every week, so if he wasn't guaranteed first team football, I think it was the right time for him to go. Yeah, um, and then obviously they just there's a few outs they've had. Paul Robinson's retired. He wasn't getting much of a look, and he could probably slot in at centre back if they needed. I was genuinely Tom Heaton got injured or suspended at some point last season. And they were on TV for the next game. And Paul Robinson trotted out. Never laughed so much in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I could have sworn he retired back in like 2011. And he just appeared state. out of nowhere. I didn't even he was keeper his day. He was, but he's like 40 years old now. Yeah. And he looked, I'm not one to say it, but he looked a bit pudgy. Like, he's already gone once upon a time too. Yeah, he's got more assists than Pogba in the Premier League. So there you go. There's yeah. a fact. Check it out. He's got five. Pogba's got four. Yeah, well, you know, you're playing for Burnley, so you're just here for the ball long to Sam Vogue's and hoping he gets a free Yeah, but I'm not talking about in the Premier League. I'm just, I'm talking about, sorry, I'm talking about the Premier League. Oh, right, okay, so he's got more than Pogba like when he was at Spurs and stuff. Yeah. And, oh, okay, it's good um, stuff. Good knowledge, yeah. Paul. And then, um, <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. And then, um, obviously, then, yeah, man, uh, Henning there, he never really got much of a run in. He's gone to Dusseldorf. And then obviously That's Joey Bart. When you're sell, when you're selling a player who you signed, I think two year, either two years ago or a year ago to a team who is like plodding along in the middle of the German second division, you know he wasn't up to much. Yeah. And then uh, Joey Barton, everyone's favorite gambler. I want to t- like I would say I want to tip off him, but if he was still having to like play football for Rangers and Burnley and stuff, he must not have been that good at Ben. So yeah, and. I don't think he's much of a loss. Let's be fair. Uh, he was a decent, more trouble than he's worth. He's a decent player in his day, but I was surprised when Bernie took him back. I think Sean Dice just liked him around the dressing room and stuff. I think he thought he was a good lad. Um, he was just misunderstood, and obviously he was another player to sit in front of the back four, so that kind of helped out. Um, because Marnie kind of on a serious note, like Marnie got injured, so he kind of needed that player to come in and fill that. Dean Marnie, Shaital. Defensive midfield role. <laughs> Experienced defensive midfield role. 